appreciative that I'm letting you dress up and decorate this place, okay? Thomas was a little more of a stickler for rules. But Thomas isn't here anymore. You're in charge now, and maybe you can help out a little bit of fun at the station. Yeah, it's up for debate. Monica, I see you decorated a little bit. And you! I can't believe you're not wearing a costume. I don't do costumes. All the crazy interrogations that we do, and you're telling me you don't wear a costume. Hey, there is a point to my presentations during interrogations, and I mean other than to piss Megan off. <laughs> That's up for debate. Hey, John. you with, Sergeant? Yeah, what, uh, what happened in here? Something's going on here, Bell. I'm telling you. I don't know what, but I'm gonna prove it. Look, three members of this department killed themselves in four years. No history of depression and no other indication. No, no, forget it. Two's a coincidence, three's what I call a pattern. John, don't you think you're putting a little too much on yourself? Look, I may be... Right, but don't worry, I'm not gonna ask you to help me out with this. Something I can do alone. You just let me worry about it, alright? No, no, no. I, I should be in there with you, keeping an eye on things. Just keep me in the loop. I, I appreciate I appreciate your, your effort, Sergeant, but right now I need you and Detective Haggerty up at North Wildwood University, Tony Cole. Homicide. Okay. What do we know so far? Not much. All Tony said was get there as quick as you can, bring back up and grab Harry from the crime lab. Sure. But, John? Yeah. You will let me know if you find something. Absolutely. Thanks. Accio Broom! Happy Halloween! You wore a costume! Of course I wore a costume! It's Halloween! Thank you! Well, of course Belle didn't wear a costume. No surprise there. But at least our new captain did. I did what? You're Humphrey Bogart, of course! No. Oh. That's awkward. Yeah. Alright, time to get back into work attire, everyone. We've got a homicide at North Wildwood University. Tony's already on the scene. He needs us there. Good luck, guys. Take the file. Leave the broom. Leave the broom? How do you get there? See, all this time I've never been here. There's still college though. <sighs> Can't you just smell the knowledge? No, but you can smell the decom. That's how they found the body in the first place. So, uh, why did you take this long to find the body? There was a big party last night. The whole floor was invited. And who found the body? One of the neighbors who didn't go to the party. Apparently the smell must have got into her room. She went to go investigate and found her dead. Ah, college. Not the best experience for me. Ah, lots of practical jokes. Mostly at my expense. Like one time, this football player, Jake Locker, he took my head so far in the toilet that they Harry, had to... Harry, did you remember to get your crime kit out of the car? Damn it. No. Sorry guys, Monica, give me your keys. I'll get him, I'll meet you guys inside. Buy a car while you're up there. has one of the highest IQs in the country, and yet he still makes such simple mistakes. And I'm guessing that Harry's high IQ is what put him on the agency's radar. 
Of course. Most of the candidates are selected for their ability to handle intensely traumatic situations, emotional horrors, and the like, while still retaining their ability to function and follow through on objectives. So Harry and I are the only candidates left, correct? I like to think of it as... I just narrowed it down to the best ones. So when are you going to tell them? you got to tell them soon. Chimera has already perfected their little virus, and it's only a matter of time before they mass produce it. And I'm aware of the situation, Belle. I'm going to talk to Harry soon. Just a lot of things have gotten in the way. Uderson Thomas's death, and Erickson's virus, and, and then there's Agent Franco snooping around. Well, you better act fast, because we are running out of time. I know. Let's, let's just focus on this crime scene right now, okay? Fine. Should be right this way. No way. Welcome to hell. Is this, is this for real? Well, it's real. I've never seen anything like it. Well, unfortunately, Tony, we have. Get out of here like this. Yeah, five years ago in Miami, <clears throat> this alleged satanic cult was going around the city murdering people. We stopped them, of course. Oh, I think I heard about that on the news. I don't think they're connected to you. We don't know anything for Puria, Tony. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Look, I'm not jumping to any conclusions, but one group of Satan worshiping priests is enough, you know, let alone two. I don't think Satanism is in the style of season. It's not real Satanism. What did you say? It's not real Satanism. A little unsettling, isn't it? I'd say the time enough was around for you. Now that you two are here, why don't we go ahead and uh, turn on the lights? Why? Um, I don't know, maybe so I can see clearly and so that's creepy. Do we have a positive identification on the victim yet? We do. I pulled this wallet from her pocket. Her name is Jennifer Raymond. She's a student here at NWU. And this is her dorm. And how about those lights? Uh, Dr. Baines, dare I ask the cause of death? Uh, where do I start? Well, as you can see, their faces were completely breaked off. Due to the lack of reaction from the body, I'd say it happened post-mortem. Also note the lack of defensive wounds. <clears throat> That's disgusting. I'm gonna go talk to some of the neighbors and figure out what happened. Um, why don't you guys fill me in when I get back? What can you tell me about the gaping chest wound, Doctor? Thanks, Tony. You're welcome, Belle. Is he alright? He's fine. About the chest wound? Right. Well, the killer, or killers, <laughs> used some sort of instrument to cut open her ribcage and yank out her heart. Just like in my happy. Harry, calm down. Calm down? Monica, I'm 1,240 miles away from Miami and I'm still dealing with this crazy cult murder shit. Harry, we don't even know if it's the same cult Come yet. on, Monica, we've got the pentagram drawn on the wall in blood, we've got the victim's heart ripped out, and I'll bet you, if you check her neck, you're going to find a mark where they injected ketamine. A little bruising at the neck. Certainly could be an injection point. I rest my case. Well, the burning of the victim's face is new. The cult in Miami never destroyed the victim's identities. Well, the cult in Miami also ejected and abducted the victims from one location and then killed them in another. Here, they injected and killed the victim in the same location, and a public location at that. Dr. Baines, do a rape kit on the victim. I'll bet you find signs of violent rape. The killer crossed the victim's arms. That's usually a sign of remorse. Some remorse. Well, it seems like one of them wasn't fully compliant in this. Sound familiar? It's the worst decision of my life. I testified against that, remember? I could be in real danger this is the same cult. Relax, Harry. Let's take this one step at a time. I can't, I, I can't be here. I gotta go. Harry, please. I can't be here. <sighs> Dr. Baines, do we know what instrument the killers used to remove the heart? There was nothing left of the crime scene. Whatever the uh, killers used, they took it with them. Any idea where the heart might be? Check underneath the bloody pentagram. There's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Small bones. Could be squirrel. 
You can tell that by just looking at the bones? Well, not exactly. But the last cult that we investigated back in Miami definitely used squirrels in their rituals. More and more it's looking like we're dealing with the same cult, or at the very least, some of its former members. Well, my question is, how did a whole group of cult members manage to get through the camps without being noticed? Dr. Baines, did the police open this door? Tony said the uh, police found the door slightly ajar when they came out. No sign of fourth century. Nobody hears anything. Could mean we're only dealing with one attacker. Could explain why nobody heard anything. The victim was here studying. She had headphones on so she didn't hear the killer enter. He takes her here with a syringe of ketamine, and then he's free to perform his ritual. All this furniture has been moved. He drags the bed to the center, does his thing, and then leaves. And the biggest question of all, why? First, I'd like to apologize for my inappropriate makeup. Earlier today, there was a confirmed homicide at North Wildwood University. As of now, the investigation has just begun and I don't have much information. The victim's information is going to be withheld until we contact the family. My office will make another statement as soon as more information becomes available. I'm sorry, but for right now, that's all the time I have. Thank you. I count 36 candles in all. The killer brought the candles to the crime scene. It's against university policy to have candles. What makes you think they might be the victims? Because our victim was a Satanist. What? Are you sure? Yeah, I just got done talking to all the neighbors and they said they were, she was very open about her devil worshipping. Well then, if Jennifer was a Satanist, then some of the stuff could be hers. We'll have to figure out where the victim ends and the killer begins. We'll have to go through this dormitory piece by piece. Well, I'll help you, if that's okay with you, of course. Yeah. Tony, get a hold of the surveillance tapes. I want to see if I caught a glimpse of our killer. You got it. Have fun. Man, John is going to flip over this one. <laughs> Speak of the devil. John wants one of us back at the station. Apparently there's been a development in our truck robbery case. The Virtus International heist? Yeah. So what do you want to do, Sergeant? No, you go back to the station. I'll catch up with you later. Let me handle this. Are you going to be okay? I'll be okay. It's nothing I haven't seen before. Hello? So I understand that you've read in candidate Alex Bell to the operation, Agent Hackerty. You understand correctly. He's brought up to speed on everything. Time is running out. Chimera is about to make their move. Are you sure the candy bell is ready? I stand by my decision. He's been making unprecedented progress and is handling this very well, as I expected. It seems you only have one candidate left. Candidate Harry Glasses. Actually, I intend to bring another candidate into this project. I know it's short notice, but I didn't expect all this to be happening so soon. Anyway, I'll be making contact with Harry soon and I'll bring him up to speed on everything. He won't be as easy to convince as Bell, but I'm confident he'll be on our side. Very well. But keep in mind that secrecy is of the utmost importance. If Kennedy Glasses does not comply... I know the parameters. Are we done? For now. Good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go change back into my witch costume.
Oh, uh, counselor, I, uh, uh... This is a costume. Oh, oh, right, right. I'm sorry, forgive me. Um, I apologize. You're here to talk to me, of course, about the homicide at North Wildwood University. Of course. The press is all over this. Well, right now you know as much as I do, but I got every officer I have working on this. There are rumors this is a cult-related murder. Really? Well, that's just great. Add that pile of crap onto the tons of fun we're having today. I see the station is celebrating Halloween this year. Not my idea, but yes. Let's just stay focused. Of course, ma'am. Oh, and Detective Haggerty is in your office. Is she now? Thank you very much. I'll let you know when I have something. Thank you. You rang? New department policy, Detective. No one's allowed in my office without my permission. Understood? Understood. Good. So, I heard you had a new lead on the uh, truck robbery case. Absolutely. Nick Bennett, former Wildwood Diablos member, finally caught him. Really? Mm-hmm. He was speeding through traffic using the stolen police uniform police car. Patrol identified the vehicle, pulled him over, and they arrested him. Well, that's great. When are you bringing him in? Should be in any minute now. I need you to be ready, yeah? All right. Excuse me, Captain. Yes, Harry, what is it? The Donnie Hughes are here to see you. Good. Would you tell them I'll be right up, please? Certainly. Thank you. You called the Donnie Hughes? Mm -hmm. Why? Private investigation, none of your concern. Let's just leave it at that. Interrogation room one, if you don't mind. Harry. Captain. What do you got for me? The evidence is on its way to my lab. Walk with me. I will get to it ASAP. Thank you. Bell has the crime scene and Tony's interviewing the neighbors. Thank you. Yep. Mr. and Mrs. Donahue, I'd like to thank you for coming all the way up from Miami to see me today. Captain, look, we've had a long drive. Let's just get right to the point. Of course, sir. There have been some developments in your son Shane's case. What kind of developments? My son committed suicide. I understand that, but new evidence may suggest that your son was murdered. Murdered? What are you talking about? Your department assured me there was no sign of foul play. Well, a lot of the evidence points to suicide. That was true. Emmy reports, tox screens, crime scene reports. I used to work this job, Captain. Everything points to suicide. My son was depressed, and no one in this department did anything to help him. Well, with all due respect, let's please try and focus on the present, Mrs. Donahue. I can't go into all the details at this time, but it seems your son wasn't our only victim. Now, if I could please just ask you a couple of questions. Uh, when was the last time you spoke to your son? We already answered all these questions. I understand that, ma'am. I wasn't present at that interview. I'd like to look at this with a fresh perspective, so if you would please, it's very important. I talked to him a few weeks before he was discovered. Um, he stopped answering my phone calls, but that was because... It, how was Shane's demeanor the last time you spoke with him? He was stressed, I could tell. He, even paranoid. He didn't want to stay too long on the phone and didn't even want to talk about anything important. He was clearly stressed out about the move from Miami to Wildwood. The move from D.C. He got over, but uh, that was a little too much. That and the loss of his girlfriend. Girlfriend? Yeah, she was a district attorney down in Miami. They started seeing each other just before the big move. Wait, wait one moment. You mean Monica Haggerty? Yeah, that was her name, Monica. He started falling in love with her. He was even going to quit his job so they could be together. He was going to give up everything for her. First she resigned, and then she disappeared. Is there something wrong, Captain? No, no, absolutely. Excuse me. Ah, oh, damn it. I have to take this. Please, um, if the two of you could please rent a motel room for the night, just try and stay local, it's on me. I have a couple more questions for you. You'll have to call us then, because we're going home. I never want to come back to Wildwood again. I understand, sir.
Got your text. <clears throat> yes. After <clears throat> further, further examining the victim's wallet, I came across <clears throat> this. Church of Satan? Yep. There's actually a Church of Satan? There is, and our victim was in fact a member. And if you want real proof that she was a Satanist, uh, that thing cost about $200 to acquire. $200? Holy shit. When I was in college, $200 was like a new TV. Hmm. Not some membership into some freaky church. Anyway, I further examined the bones, and as I predicted, squirrel. <laughs> What's funny? I mean, come on. Of all animals to sacrifice, squirrel? Really? I have actually a very important detail, Tony. Back in Miami, the cult members were sacrificing squirrels, so we're looking for similarities. Whatever. Is there any evidence on the killer? Yes. Actually, funny enough, we got a print that was not the victim's. I'm assuming it was the killer's, but it didn't show up in APHIS. How about the DNA? Uh, the DNA is actually running right now. When it's ready, I'm going to get an email. So, earlier, you mentioned that you testified against the cult in Miami? Yes. Care to explain? I was in the cult. What? Are you serious? It wasn't one of my prouder moments. You in a satanic cult? I thought you were an atheist. I am. I, I wasn't really... <clears throat> it was a mistake. I've been told that I was an outcast and I did it for acceptance, but I kind of found it in the wrong places. I mean, it was just... As soon as I found out that they were killing people and all that stuff, I got out and started testifying against them. Then that means you're a possible target, Harry. I don't know much about Satanism or cults, but I do know a thing or two about witnesses testifying against organized crime. Oh, it's ready. It's actually kind of fast. From the killer? No, from the victim. I sent ID samples to the lab because um, her face was burned, so I wanted to check her ID. Uh-oh. What? What is it? A red flag is getting blocked. By who? The Department of Justice. More specifically, the U.S. Marshal. Apparently our victim is not Jennifer Raymond. Jennifer Raymond doesn't exist. Witness protection. Looks like you're not the only one testifying against this cult. You sure you don't want witness protection? Join you, kid. Come on in. Homely place. If you can call it that. Sheesh. How are things going at the station? Well, if they were bad here, they've gotten worse. Turns out our victim, Jennifer Raymond, not Jennifer Raymond. She was under the protection of the U.S. Marshal Service. Witness protection. Correct. And let me guess, she's testifying against a cult. Damn, you're good. The Heaven's Night cult from Miami. Mm-hmm. They're back. Yeah, and that brings us to another problem. Since this case crosses state lines, it's federal jurisdiction. So that means... That Agent Franco is coming to see us again. Correct. He and his goons should be at the station within an hour, so why don't you bring me up to speed really quickly before we have to go and deal with a whim of them. Gotcha. Okay. The victim was at her desk studying. The rest of the floor okay. was away at a party. Uh -huh. Killer enters from the door, All right. takes her out from behind with a syringe of ketamine. All right. He pulls the bed to the center of the room, All right. lays her out, uh -huh. puts out all of his ritual supplies, then he stabs her in the heart, Jesus. removes the heart, oh my God. burns off her face with some sort of pot instrument. There's an imprint on the floor over there. Yeah. Uh, he takes the heart with him. Question. What the hell happened to the doorknob? Oh, yeah. I asked forensics to remove that and take it back to the lab. I have a feeling that the killer must have picked his lock. Oh, good thinking. I'm sorry. Continue. You were, uh, you were somewhere with the heart and the... Cutting. Heart was out. Oh, gee. Oh, and uh, that's pretty much the end so far. Oh, God. Jeez. Right out of one of those Hollywood satanic killings. Jeez. Right down to the star on the wall. What do they call those things? Begins with a P? A pentagram. Pentagram, that's what it is. Actually, it's very interesting that you point that out. Uh -huh. You see, contrary to popular belief, a pentagram is actually a symbol of protection against evil spirits. They never taught me that in Sunday school. No, they did not. A true Satanist, like the victim, would know that. Okay. Only an inverted pentagram pointed downward is a symbol for Satanism. And this one's pointing upward. That's correct. Okay. All these cliché black candles, animal sacrifices, ripping out people's hearts, none of that is any place in true Satanism. This entire thing is a setup. Yes. No one in this cult is actually a Satanist. They're okay, just we'll, cold-blooded we'll, we'll, we'll hold a second. Back up one minute. Nobody in this cult is a Satanist. They are pseudo-Satanists. 
Okay, now really quick, why don't you explain that to me? Well, let me start with a question. John, how, according to the FBI, how many satanic murders were recorded in history? In history? I don't know. Upwards of 100? Zero. None. There has never been a recorded homicide done in the name of Satan or Satanism. Pseudo-Satanism is a false form of Satanism used by multiple people. Ways to rebel against society, to commit vandalism against churches, to explain unexplained mental disorders, and in this case, as an excuse for cold-blooded murder. They use satanic propaganda like this to scare the victims into compliance and to make sure nobody talks about it. So this isn't a gang of Satanists, this is just a gang of killers. That's right. Jeez. But for right now, we're only looking for one. All right. Before you ask, we're going to meet with Bell in about 10 minutes. We'll get the recap from Miami then. Can we confirm this is a cult-influenced murder? Well, sort of. There was evidence of satanic rituals being performed at the crime scene, but we think we're just dealing with one killer here. Toxicology reports came in. Turns out it was, in fact, ketamine. So our victim was subdued. Yes, and also it turned out that she was in witness... Witness protection, yes. Tony called me. Oh, is the second. FBI taking over I'm this case? It. I'm not okay, quite sure great. yet. DeAngelis. By the way, uh, we did confirm it was... Oh, Delta, 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 hi. Uh, yeah, can, I'm really busy right now. Can I, can I call you back in about maybe two minutes, please? Thank you very much. Hey, Nick Bennett's on his way to interrogation. Thank you. So. Okay, everybody. Can I get a little space, please? Just for a second. Thank you. Tom, I am really, really starting to hate your job. Mr. Bennett, we can do this all night, but I'm going to ask you one more time. Where are those stolen weapons? That's not good enough! Satan has been the best friend the church has ever had, as he has kept it a business all these years. Statement 9? That's the one. Personal favor of mine. So, Nick Bennett is doing well, despite John's best efforts. That man is going away for a long time, no matter what we say. He's facing a laundry list of charges, one of which is the murder of a police officer. I honestly don't know what John's going to get out of him. We have nothing to offer him. I like Satan represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams. It's atheistic by nature. That's why I like it. I, uh, I hate to interrupt a little cult meeting here, guys. Yes? Please tell me that isn't the book we found in the victim's pillowcase. Yes, it is actually. Oh, God. And before you ask, we dusted it for fingerprints, yeah. and they all match hers, and now yours. Guess she really was a Satanist, huh? She really was a Satanist. She owned the Satanic Bible, and she lived by it. Well, after the cult, of course. How does one exactly live by the Satanic Bible? Well, the Satanic Bible lays out specifically what a Satanist is, and the Heaven's Night cult does not fit that bill. For example, Statement four of the nine satanic statements calls for kindness for those who deserve it. And in the book of Lucifer, it states that under no circumstances should a satanist sacrifice a animal or child. Adults are okay, though. 
Wow, you've really read into this, haven't you, Sarge? A few times. Well, even if you haven't read the Satanic Bible, the Tenet Satanic Rule of the Earth says that no non-human animals are to be harmed unless attacked, which obviously the cult broke. And the Fifth Satanic Sin is herd conformity, um, which a cult is by definition. I'm just going to assume you guys have done a lot of research. It makes sure. you comfortable. It does. Point is, there is no Satanic conspiracy going on, so the media has no need to make a moral panic of this again. All right. I'll feed that to him. Um, just keep me in the loop. Let me yeah. find anything. Thank you. Uh, Monica, really quick, I'm really tired. Would you mind taking over for Mr. Bennett for me? He might open up to you. Sure. Thank you. So how do you know so much about Satanism? I was tracking a mark several years ago whose particular history required that I know more about the religion and its various offshoots. Satanism tends to leave an unsavory stain on people. It makes others uncomfortable. But not you, of course. <laughs> Nothing makes me uncomfortable. Nothing except for natural disasters and doctors named Erickson, which you never explained to me, by the way. Those are secrets. So you know all my secrets, but you can't trust me with any of yours. When you're ready. Thank you. Well, I better get in there. Wish me luck. I was just about to call you. Does that mean you have some results? <clears throat> sure do. I was taking a closer look at the lock mechanism from the Satanist storm, and there's definitely some tool marks. You see? So the killer did pick the lock. Looks like it, and this is no amateur work either. I mean, we're looking at someone who knew what they were doing. The killer definitely had some lock picking skills. Okay, so maybe our killer is a locksmith or uses lock picking tools in his work. How about the DNA? Nothing. The signature was definitely male, but there was no hit in CODIS. Run it against my DNA. What? Run the killer's DNA against my exemplar from the department. Why? Just do it. Theory. Thanks. Oh wait, uh, uh, Dr. Baines uh, took another look at the victim's face and he said that he thinks her face was burned off by an iron. With an iron? Well, there was an ironing board in the dormitory, but no iron, so the killer must have taken it with him. Thanks, Harry. Uh, wait, one more thing. Yes? I think we haven't really got to talk since all this stuff's been going on and everything, and we've known each other for a long time. What, five, six, seven years now, and we've never really hung out Harry, anything, please I... get to the point. Where were you the night Thomas was killed? I was home, alone. Home, huh? Like, you don't like my answer? No. I... Well, why did you ask me about astrology and Monica's birthday? It was a personal matter. It had nothing to do with work. I can't help a feeling you're hiding something from me. Do you think I'm lying to you? No, but if you were, you'd be able to do it without being detected, without using micro-expressions. Not that I could read them, but I'm sure they're not there. Just focus on the case, okay? Fine. Come in. Captain? Yeah, Ronnie, come in. Sorry I'm late. Um, I was in court all day. Stuart Lang's arraignment is going pretty well. He's being held without bail. Oh, good. Glad to hear that. Excuse me. Oh, I've never seen another chair in this office before. Yeah, well, please. Thank you. Things have changed around here a little bit since you know, Tom was killed. Yeah. Look, Ron. Tom and I never really got along. That really wasn't a secret around here, but last thing I ever said to him was I told him to go fuck himself, and I could never take that back. 
I'm sure he knew you didn't mean it. Anyway, it, it, it made me really think about how I get along with the people that I work with, especially in this job. The last time you see somebody might really be the last time. I mean, comes down to you and me, we've never really gotten along ever. You know, we've known one another 13 years and it started bad when Charlie, when Officer Costanza was, was killed. And I defended his killer. Look, I was there, why do we have to rehash this? Because we need to get past it, or at least I do. I've been harping over Charlie's death for too long and I've been holding you responsible for it. I did the same thing to Tom with Agent Franco and look how that ended. Okay, what do you want me to say? That's, I mean, it's nothing personal. That's just how the justice system works. You were cops, I was a public defender. We were just doing our jobs and I mean, that's all we can be expected to do. I, I understand that it just took me 13 years to figure it out. And if I could go back or... Well, you can't change the past, John. I would like to clear the air between us, you know, kind of start fresh. Be a little bit difficult, but can we give it a shot? Of course we can. Right. Thanks. Was that all you wanted? Not exactly, no. Look, you wanted in with me on the Thomas's case, right? Of course. Okay. Well, so far I've managed to connect Tom's death to at least two more from this department. Shane Donahue in 2009 and Greg Uders in 2013. And all three were members of this department and all committed suicide within a span of about four years. Now something just doesn't add up. All three only had two things in common. One, they all came here in a large department transfer from Miami-Dade in 2009. Okay, what's the second thing? Second thing's a little more difficult to figure out. They were all connected to one person. Oh, John. Uh, just hear me out for just one second, all right? Before I take you down this road, there's just one thing. I want you with me on this. Just you. You're the newest member here. You have the least connections here. Because of what happened with Charlie all those years ago, I think you'll do justice straight wherever this may lead. Where do you think it's gonna lead? Well, that's the thing. I'm not exactly sure yet, but I am gonna figure that out. I can give you a rundown and everything in the morning if you want to stop at home. Before you say that, I just want to say this isn't going to be easy. You're going to have to physically deceive everyone that you work with. Until we figure out who here is connected with it. They're all suspects. Huh? That's right. So, come back tomorrow. Maybe I can give you a rundown and everything I've got. Sounds good. Someone within your department has been trying to run a background check on you, Agent. Really? Our intel has traced the searches to the office and computer of your new captain, John DeAngelis. Yes, he has been poking around a lot lately, but it's understandable. Someone was bound to figure out if there was more going on here eventually. He won't get anywhere. At this juncture, we cannot risk anyone finding out about Chimera. You know the rules, Agent. If Captain DeAngelis finds out, you must eliminate him. Agent. Yes, understood. Is something wrong, Captain? Because you appear troubled. Maybe I appear troubled because military-grade weapons are loose somewhere out there on the street. Maybe I appear troubled because I have a satanic cult murder to do with stop. Pseudo satanic cult murder. And maybe, just maybe, I appear troubled because in a station like this, I never know what kind of supernatural or crazy shit is going to-
I can explain. There was no one in the room with you. If you didn't shoot Nick Bennett, then who did? A ghost? Ah, oh, Megan's gonna love this. Our victim has no identification, his face has been destroyed, and there's a pile of bones over there by that tree. This guy is getting sloppy. Maybe it's the anticipation of whatever ritual he's doing. In the name of Satan, the ruler of the earth, I command the forces of darkness to bestow their infernal power upon you. Open wide the gates of hell, and come forth the abyss, to greet me as your brother and friend. Shemim Farash, hail Satan! But hey, we'll get this way, counselor. If we don't, we can always line the station with salt.